we got to hit the Carolina Panthers, okay? Frank Wright was fired this week, which came less than 24 hours after the owner left the locker room muttering expletives after the loss on Sunday. But here's a discussion I think that needs to be had. Is this a David Tepper problem? Let me give you some stats here. The Panthers are short now to have the sixth straight losing season since Tepper took the team. He fired three coaches in six seasons. Ron Rivera didn't make it in year two under his ownership. Matt Rule didn't make it in year two under his ownership. Frank Wright didn't make it through year one. But then David Tepper decided to speak yesterday to the media, and he basically said, yes, we were going to trade up to number two to get C.J. Stroud, but everyone unanimously favored Bryce Young. The problem is the ownership, and there's nothing that can be done. You, is this a question or is it your opinion? Yeah, I just want your thoughts. I, on the I whole agree Carolina with everything situation. you just said. Yeah. No, I mean, this is – look, it's the same thing with Steve Cohen with the New York Mets. It's great when you have a hedge fund billionaire who's hyper-aggressive and wants to win. It's also a curse. There's a fine line. Sometimes you have to be told no. The problem with most of these owners, very few of them have ever been told no in their life. So he's overreacting and he's emotional and he's making bad decisions. And it's a job that, frankly, Rico, I think it's toxic. If I were an oh, up-and-coming no, assistant, toxic. I'm not taking that job. It's very toxic, though. David, maybe I'm wrong. I often imagine if he was a billionaire, this is how you would run your team. Wait, you did what? Gone to the moon, cannon, into the sun. I can see you doing that. But, no, I, I think that this, this, is a, this is an ownership problem. And the fact that I still don't know who in the room really wanted C.J. Stroud and who didn't want C.J. Stroud is the question mark. Because obviously they weren't unanimous. Because you know what happens when you're unanimous? You don't hear about, well, you know, I really didn't want him. I He wanted Bryce Young. I didn't. And now when you see that next guy going on and becoming that type of a quarterback and you're struggling with Bryce Young, oh, and by the way, you gave away your best receiver and you really don't have a first round pick. And yeah, th this is uh, good luck. Ben Johnson, do not take a phone call from that area. Coach. The sad part is he got interviewed. He's from that area. Right. But when you think of it as you were blessed to say no, don't make that mistake. If they call you this time, you right. What is it? Like seven coaches in six years? It will be when he hires the next one. Yeah. No. Yeah. Do not. That is the epitome of dead end job. You're, make sure you get enough money and figure out where you're going to be in about a year and a half when you have all this extra money. Where are you going to go first? So let's continue our discussion here on coaches for a quick minute because there's a stat here that since the merger, a ESPN stat, that six NFL coaches since the merger who didn't finish their first season with the team, three now have happened in the last three years, which is Urban Meyer, Hackett, and Reich. But the reason why I bring that up is because there's other reports here regarding coaches and what may happen before the 2024 season. Jordan Schultz says that it's for certain he works for Bleacher Report, certain that Staley, Staley's going to lose his job. And then you have Adam Schefter reporting, seems like a high number here, anywhere between seven and ten head coaching changes before next season. Yes. Are we having a problem here with patience in the NFL when it comes to firing coaches a little bit too soon? Yeah. You want to take the lead on this? I think we are. Yeah, you I will. seem all bricked up to talk, uh, I, I, <laughs> David. I think we, there, <laughs> cookies introduced the greatest term in history. Please, I think there is a lack of patience because it used to be you gave a quarterback time to develop, you gave the team time to develop. Now your quarterback, you you draft him, and by week three, he's in there if he's your franchise guy. But it also means it's going to come with a lot of losses, a lot of heartbreak. But you thought you hired a coach who could fix that when you really can't. So, yes, the impatience is not there. Fans want to win right now. They're buying the jerseys. This is this is a problem that I don't know how it's going to get corrected, but you're going to see a lot more coaches getting fired more and more each year. Where they're going to probably be about eight to ten jobs available every year because you're saying, I'm just going to fire you in year one. You're, yeah, you're not working out. Let me Let me help Rico with this. It's completely stupid. It's stupid. You can't fix a football team in one year. Can't do it. It'd be the equivalent of firing Dan Campbell in year one. It's ridiculous. Great point. It's. I mean, honestly, now here's your other problem. I think we're seeing the same thing with college football with the portal. 
December 4th, mark it down in your calendars. December 4th is going to be the end of college football for a lot of people because you are going to see thousands of players in the portal. You are going to go, wait, why is player X leaving? We're paying him. He's happy here. He plays. He's good. We are seeing something in sports where maybe I'm just getting older, but a lot of it rubs me the wrong way. And these NFL firings, here's the other thing. You can take it from likely to mortal lock. Enjoy the last five, six weeks you got Ben Johnson. There'll just be too many jobs yeah. available for him not to get one. Totally agree with that one. Well, Black Friday has come and gone, and we had our first NFL game on Black Friday where the Dolphins defeated the Jets 34-13. to Are we a fan of the Black Friday game? No, get rid of it. It's greedy. It's stupid. It takes away from the college football. I have no interest in it. Yeah, especially early in the day. Three o'clock. It just felt yeah. weird. Like Again, greedy. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's like you almost forgot about it. Like, oh, man, there's a football game. Yeah, exactly. And no, it wasn't even luck. a marquee game. I guess they thought it was going to be a marquee game at the beginning of the season because they thought that Aaron Rodgers would be there. But you're in luck. I totally forgot about it. I chose F this. I'm not doing this. It ranks right up there with the European games. Early in the morning. 9 30 a.m. Yeah. And normally around eleven o'clock, you're like, wait, isn't there a game on right now? And you switch and it's the third quarter. Third quarter is almost ending and it's too late by then. Guys, I thought I can celebrate this week. My team, the Steelers, finally gained over four hundred total yards for the first time in three years. R.I.P. Canada. But I couldn't celebrate, guys, because we have a diva on my team. His name is Deontay Johnson. He decided. One play after his touchdown was called, not a touchdown, called incomplete. He decided on a fumble from Jalen Warren to just let the ball go by him and let the other team pick up the ball and run the other way. Why are wide receivers such divas? I think it's problematic because it's the one position where you are totally dependent on somebody else to get you the ball. Running back, you get the ball and you run through the hole. You need your offensive lineman. But as a wide receiver, if the quarterback doesn't throw to you and chooses one of the other three guys out there, you don't get anything. So you have to almost showboat and stand out and peacock in order to get the attention. And then they just it just keeps going and going, and then you start believing the hype. It happens not just wide receivers, any sport. See Draymond Green. He should have been suspended. That was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. You got guys sacrificing their damn body, putting it all on the line, and you can't be bothered because you're pouty. Oh, by the way, you dropped a touchdown earlier in the day. But see, there's no accountability anymore. I don't want to hear Deontay Johnson say, I'm sorry. I don't want to say, oh, my effort will be better. How about this? How about you're not playing next week? How about I'm taking a game check from you? How about you grow the F up? I, I don't know. It's just, it's all of it. It makes you like sports less. Like, I have no issue with these guys that are best in the world Man. at what they do, but the amount of money and the amount of entitlements with young people, I've had enough. You like sports less until the summer comes and it's not there, and then you start anticipating it. And What's not start... there? We have Tiger Baseball, where we get to watch Javi Baez make twenty five grand in at bat and not come within two feet of a baseball. What do you mean I like it less? If you had Javi Baez on your bingo card, go ahead and cross that one off. <laughs> well, that is a great way to end. That is in football today.